All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello, how are you today? Uh, right now, you should be testing out to see if your case fits within our constraints, and we're going to use a slicer program to do that. So whatever your case looks like, you need to get an STL file for that, or you need to have that ready, and then be able to open that. So you need to know where it saves it to in your computer. Uh, the slicer we're gonna be using is this IIIP slicer. It is a Cura program, very basic. Um, it should be a desktop icon. If not, come down here to your search and just type in IIIP. There we go, pop right up. Click on that, let it think, let it load. Like I said, this is a very basic slicer program, so it doesn't have very many options for you to use. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna load our model. Okay, so yours should automatically download into the desktop. I would recommend you save it someplace where you can find it, even if that is just leaving it in the uh, downloads folder. So this is our STL in the print environment. This little bar is telling us how quickly or how much of it is done where it's thinking about the tool path. So before you jump for joy at your numbers here, Let's make sure that all of our settings here are correct because what the slicer actually does is it takes and essentially breaks your object down into a layer by layer kind of build plan and it figures out the tool path to actually generate your infill and your, your shell and all that other happy stuff. So we need to make sure all of these settings are correct because if they are not correct, then it's not going to 3D print correctly. Okay? So... Your layer height should be 0.2 millimeters. Your shell thickness should be 0.8 millimeters. That's how thick these little walls are. That's the minimum thickness. Um, bottom and top thickness, again, 0.8. So that's two layers or several layers of the filament. And fill density, 10%. Do not go below 10%. Do not go above 15%. 10% is a great number. Your print speed, this is the basic print speed of it. So that's 50. Temperature and all that shouldn't affect it. You want a raft and you want support everywhere because otherwise you're going to have a structure that's like way up high and it's going to try and print that structure out huh, up high and it's just not going to be good. Then you need to come over to this advanced tab. You need to come over here and turn your settings to match mine here. Okay. The travel speed can be 50, but if it tries to print at 50, you're going to get a spaghetti bowl mess. The PLA is not going to adhere correctly. So you need to change your settings to be 20 all the way down for these. This is a surefire way to get it to actually print. Okay. So once all of your settings match my settings, that's when you can look at this thing and do a screenshot. Okay. So use your snip tool, whatever. And you want to do a screenshot of this because it's telling me that it's only going to take eight hours and 54 minutes to print this. That's within your time constraint. And it's only going to take 66 grams. That's within your mass constraint. Now we need to check our volume constraint. So come down here to the scale and it's going to give you the sizes of your object in millimeters. So since it is below, the maximum dimension is below 175 millimeters and it's within that constraint. I believe that this is within the volume constraint. Just take the number of centimeters times number of centimeters times number of centimeters. If you get it below a thousand, you're within the constraint. So this thing looks good. I would submit a screenshot, boom, of this thing, because what this tells me is the amount of time that's going to take. It tells me how much it's going to take. and It tells me the overall volume of it to make sure that you are within your constraints. Okay, so hopefully this video helps you out. If you have any questions, let me know.